Hey, hello. Welcome to Waste Not Wednesday on Thursday. I'm Let's over here. <laughs> huh? And, well, I'm not a shot right now. Oh, okay. Well, maybe get in shot and I'll pull up comments. You guys Sorry. talk loud because the camera's way back so you guys can see this. We've got uh, the kitchen island going on today. We've got some table legs that we took off of an old table and that's going to be kind of the front detail of that and then we're going to throw all this together. None of this is screwed together so we're going to go and do that maybe a little bit loud here and there with the drills but hopefully the noise cancelling works on the phone good and you don't hear it too crazy loud. Um, if you're just tuning in make sure to tell us where you're from and if you celebrated Christmas yesterday maybe let us know what your favorite gift was. Um, I think that probably my favorite thing that I got was my big fluffy robe that Zeb bought me because I am all for cozy and comfy. Zeb, what was your favorite gift yesterday? My knife sharpener. Your knife sharpener? The one that you picked out with me? Yeah, I've been using I used it like all day long. I'm like, oh, this knife needs sharpened, and this knife needs sharpened, and this one needs sharpened. Awesome. I, I'm glad that I could buy you something that you like. <laughs> Trying to find the sweet spot on the camera here. If you guys haven't um, watched with us before, we are renovating a 100-year-old farmhouse as one of our many projects. And so that is where we are at today, at the farmhouse. Um, and this is the Kitchen Island. If you haven't done so, make sure you hit that subscribe and notifications button below. If you love DIYs, um, renovations, thrift hauls, all of that, you'll find on our channel. And we normally go live on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. But today, we're just like the trash man. We're a day late and a dollar short because yesterday was Christmas. So yeah, you can be you can be the camera girl if you promise not to shake it all around crazy. I promise. Cross my I'm heart. Just adjust that up top and bring it over here. <laughs> all right. Okay, so I used a Craig jig. Hold on. There we go. I used a Craig jig to uh, basically put all these holes in there, and we'll show you how to use that in just a little bit. I'll give you some tips and pointers on that. I'm going to be using it to build all the cabinets in the whole house. And they, the actual cabinetry will be built a little differently on the island. I want the island to be really sturdy because we do a lot of DIYs on our island and uh, I don't think we're going to change that here in this house. So somebody said they're hoping we can get wireless microphones in the future. We need to find wireless mics that also work with our phones because that's how we go live. I'm sure they make them. So as far as AirPods, yeah. So what the deal is with that, that, if we used AirPods, only one of us would be able to be heard. And we could probably go spend a few thousand dollars on some real fancy equipment and, and get it set up through a computer and things. What if we need for one AirPod? But what happens is um, it's always, it, for whatever reason, when we stream live, it makes the sound really quiet when you use an external mic. Oh yeah, because we did buy mics. Yeah, we have the mics. And we tried them, but then it wasn't as good, so I guess we'll just have to keep trying different things. Um, I, let's see. Uh, somebody commented on my, oh, Robin said that she liked my hoodie, that it looks cozy. Um, Zeb, it's from Costco, Zeb bought it for me for Christmas. And it is cozy. Hopefully that's not too loud. I don't think so. Right. So the kitchen island, you're probably wondering why we're building it now when we have a million other things to do. One, because it's pretty and I have to have something pretty and this other stuff is boring. But also because it will give me a good idea of how the kitchen layout is going to work. It just visually helps me with design. I'm not a trained designer by any means. And so I kind of have to see things and then I get ideas. I'm also really bad at spatial orientation. Like I'll think that certain things will fit and then my measurements are all off. And Zeb's like, how did you not know? <laughs> so having the island done is gonna help with that. All right. Blue Kayla says, hey, I'm only kind of watching. They are uh, buying a washer and dryer. It's all right, Kayla. This is not your normal schedule live. So I will watch for people popping on that maybe should not be. I should have told my sister a name because she is a moderator, I think. All right, yeah, Caitlin uh, is super excited because she's moving into a new townhouse in January. So my sister-in-law came in, my sister-in-law, my sister, I don't know why I said in-law, I guess because my sister-in-law is also coming today. But my sister came in last night, stayed the night with us, and we surprised her this morning. And so my sister 
Deborah is with Caitlin right now helping her buy a washer and dryer and probably helping her get a little organizing done before she moves. Yeah, Deborah's the master organizer. Well, and then Deb's brother Tyrell and his wife Mariah, who if you guys have watched their videos, you've seen them. Mariah is our retail director for our stencil line. And so they're coming. <laughs> So what I'm doing here is I just basically built the side of the island. And I'm using coarse wood screws that are designed to go with the, uh, the Craig's jig because it leaves like a flat hole on the bottom. Because if you use a traditional screw with it, a lot of times you'll split the wood because it's not designed for that. And we bought this Craig jig quite a while ago. And specifically we bought the Craig jig <laughs> system because we knew we'd be building a ton of custom cabinetry. Um, we're not paid to say that, but Craig Jig is awesome. I also got a question is that our refrigerator behind us, Deb, you want to show them that's our refrigerator and our freezer. So we, we have two fridges. Well, we have a fridge and a freezer in our garage right now, and then we have a fridge-freezer combo in the house inside. So basically we have... A full-size fridge and a full-size freezer. Yeah, we're replacing all of that with these two big ones. We bought one on clearance, and the other one we just got on sale. I'm gonna call it good. I mean, we have five kids, so you gotta have a fridge. I'm willing to sacrifice a lot of things, but I gotta have certain things that are keeping up food. All right, Jamie, your next job is going to be, I'm just gonna put, I'm putting glue on these. You don't necessarily have to. The union that the, uh, the Craig jig with the, uh, the screws creates is really strong, but I like to glue stuff. So we're going to be doing this live to show you the basic construction of the island. Obviously, it won't get all done in an hour. But then we are going to take part of this live video and some filming that we've done, and we'll create a full edited video so you can see how we built the island start to finish, including the paint finish. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the top built for this yet because we were hoping to use that tabletop, but it's only six and a half feet, and this island is eight feet long. Yeah, the tabletop that came with the legs. So we, and we haven't decided, like, we're going back and forth. Do we want to do a natural wood, like, butcher block style? Do we want to do marble on the countertop? Who knows? So Your job is to come put your foot right here without moving my board. Okay. I, I, <laughs> now remember, these are my favorite boots. Don't worry. Nothing will happen to your boots. Not to these my favorite. Ooh, super chat. Six ninety nine from Wendy. Woo-woo. Thank you. Uh, let's All right. see. Are you, are you strong with your, leg, with your weight on that? Yeah, I've got a strong leg. But I'm also reading comments. Oh, Sherry um, says she's going to be building an island. She said also that her car got stolen. Oh, I'm no. so sorry, Sherry. That's awful. Um, Jessica says, what color paint are you going to be using? I don't know. We haven't decided, <laughs> we haven't decided yet. if we're even going to paint it. Um, we will probably get it built and to the point of being finished, and then we might do the finish work later because I have to see what it looks like with all the white, I will either go white with a stained top, or I might paint it a color, you never know. I'm always doing different things. All right, now uh, they said it. quartz, not marble or granite. Probably quartz, yeah, because marble is, um, marble is a pain in the bum. Quartz is a little bit more durable. Okay. Oh. All right, uh, lots, of, lots of weight right okay. here. Last time it was, okay, you know, I got it, sorry. You weren't heavy enough. Kenny says electrical. There will be an outlet on each side of it. Yeah. And we'll, that'll get shown when I start doing the electrical. Um, let's see. Uh, soapstone? Do you know about soapstone? I've never heard of that. Um, I've seen it. I've not, I haven't researched like its durability. I don't know. I think it's a softer. If I remember correctly. What top coat would you guys use on a black distressed wooden high chair that will get a lot of use? And how many coats? Sarah, I would use DIY's big top. It's all natural, it's got a satin finish. You can pick it up at JamieRayVintage.com and I would do probably at least two coats on the whole thing and I would do three coats on all the areas that will get the most use. And then let it sit for an entire month before you use it if you can. If you can't wait a month, at least give it a week. But you want that paint and sealer to cure. All right, Sorry, so. You guys aren't seeing my face. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to stand anymore, you're good. All right. I think they can, can see. see they can see you right there. Yeah, we can bring you up to the chair. I mean, I can sit on the floor. Just don't, just don't sit up high from where you're at right now. I'll squat down. How about that? <laughs> Kayla says she's surprised I haven't heard of soapstone. You know what? I know a lot of things, but not all of the things. <laughs> that, that's why I asked Beth. When I was growing up, I used to ask my mom 
all the questions and she would sometimes make up answers or she knew it. <laughs> Does that doesn't usually make up answers, but you usually I know never it. make up answers. Yeah. If I don't know, I tell you. Um, Anna says, I have a drawer in my island that has electric and it has her, she has her toaster and her hand mixer in it. That's awesome. Yeah, we, um, we don't keep our toaster on the counter. We always pull it out for use. And I was thinking about um, putting it in a drawer because then we just pull it out as we need it. But it would be cool if you could figure out some way to have the electric in the drawer because it could just stay plugged in. So this will have all drawers. We're not doing cabinet doors on it. Yeah, this is going to have all drawers on the back. And on the front, it's just going to be shiplap. Um, let's see. Soapstone is soft and very expensive, I think, but looks honed and farm style. Good to know. Maybe I can find a brand that's willing to work with me on soapstone. Well, if it's said. expensive, it's out of my budget. Well, that's why I said I think it's a softer stone, so I don't know that that'll work for our lifestyle. Oh, that's true. I'm not about, I, it's got to be super, super durable. That's the thing that I was thinking about going with a wood top because we can refinish it periodically, and we're, we can fix it and it has a problem. Oh, soapstone is the kind of top you find in old high school science labs, though. Oh. So it must be durable. Uh, Melanie says it's got an antique theater chair. Um, it actually is. I have a single chair. And I have a pair of chairs that I picked up at a local uh, antique shop. It's actually going out of business called Nook and Cranny. I don't know if they're going out of business so much as the old guy that owns it is retiring and wants to do well, something. Well, storage closing. Right. Yeah, like I think so, they're just... But well, that's going out of business. Yeah, I guess. There's a difference between like business is bad and I retire. Yeah, I think business is fine. I just think I think well I I heard through the grapevine that the rent was being raised. Oh. So maybe that's what it was. But anyways, yeah, that's what this is. This will this will wind up in the farmhouse. Um I bought it right after we bought the farmhouse when I bought the mirror that's in our half bath. If you guys have watched our bathroom renovation video, I bought this along with that. Um, I think I paid $99 for all three, which to me, I feel like it's a pretty good deal around here. These are not common to come by. They'll get a cleanup job, and then I will recover them. They're actually really comfortable, and Doug gave me a hard time when I bought them, but he sits in them all the time. They're my best thinking chairs here at the farmhouse. Now, hands are, if you guys saw the picture <laughs> I posted on stories and on Facebook about his thinking face, he literally was doing math. About his clothes. I was, <laughs> he was literally thinking in that photo. I was trying to figure out how many uh, spaces I needed in my uh, for my supports. Did you, did you tell him that you did pocket holes in all of these joints? Yeah, I did the pocket holes. It probably took me about an hour to make all the cuts, maybe an hour and a half to figure out all the cuts and put the uh, the pocket holes in them for the screws. Kitchen cabinet pull out with electric that I did leave basket for butter and jam. Heck yes. Always leave room for butter. We're all about like organic real butter in our house. We we go through probably, I don't know, a couple pounds a week. We eat a lot of it, that is for sure. We eat a lot of butter. We probably eat minimum two pounds of bacon, sometimes three to four pounds of bacon, and at least two pounds of butter every week at our house. Someone asked me about the plants. Um, oh, Cindy says hand stitch flower sack dish towels all florals. I don't know what she was talking about. That's so awesome. See if she said something else. Do you find those giant clamps at Harbor Freight? So they have something similar. These clamps are actually from uh, Home Depot. They're the Betsy clamps. I love them. I use them for making tables back when I was making a table a week. And they're super strong, and they open up to 50 inches wide. They're about 60 bucks per clamp, but they're they're awesome. We bought them when we started doing farm tables. When we were starting to build them. Foot yeah. over here, and like all your weight on the one foot. And I feel like we bought like one, and then we bought another one because at that time we couldn't really afford to spend a ton. So each time we would book a farm table, we'd buy another one. All right, good job. Okay, one more screw, and we gotta do. Stephanie says I should paint a little from some. I don't have any stuff here. <laughs> I don't have any stuff at the farmhouse. Steph, do you only use crate pocket hole screws or is there I actually one? countersink um, most of my stuff, but because I'm putting together this um, you talk a little louder, I think. with the two by fours, I use the Craig jig. But yeah, the Craig, I haven't found that they're any uh, less expensive unless you get them online from Amazon. The, 
those pocket hole screws, like that's all that Home Depot carries that I've found and seen in other brands. Well, and Zeb doesn't always use the crank jig when he builds, but in the case where we're building this for like a piece for our home, it's worth the extra effort and screws. All right, I need your weight right here. Find oh, the sorry, wrong hole. Okay, okay. So Kathleen says her husband's building a trash can for all microwave built in and a cookbook shelf in her island. Nice. So we have a um, big walk-in pantry over there, and that is where the... Hold on. One more screw. Okay. <laughs> Hold that thought. Yeah. That's where we'll keep the trash can and all of those items. The microwave, everything, that all goes in the pantry. That's where it's at in our pantry now. This pantry is actually bigger um, than the one that we have. But that sounds like awesome. A trash can pull out is super nice. I actually think we might do a trash can pull out in the pantry. because that That's the fun. pantry back over here. Like this whole room will be pantry. Yeah. Our pantry has a window. Yep. All right, now we got to put the top on. Because most corner cabinets are useless. You use metal pull-outs from Rev somebody. We regret the builder talked us out of better interiors. It's on our list to redo. Do we have corner cabinets? No, not, I, I'm not going to have any in here. Yeah, we're not. We're going to do only bottom cabinets, and that's why we need the large pantry, because a lot of our storage will be either in the island or in the walk-in pantry. I like to have like lots of stuff where I can like hide it and people don't see it. All right, Jay. Why am I building a giant island? Because we're gonna live here. We're gonna need a giant island. This is this this is being set up in the exact location where it will live. Well, actually, it's gonna live about a foot that way. What am I doing next? You are holding the board up. Okay, I'm gonna put comments down. I'll pull it back in a second. She'll be right back. Okay. All right, just hold it right there and just kind of okay. with your hand. Somebody asked if these big turn legs are for the island. They are. We salvaged them from a used table. And when we get to, in a little bit, we'll talk to you about how we're going to make them tall enough for this island. We had a few ideas, but Zeb and I worked together to come up with a plan that I think will be easy and efficient. George today, so we're not going no, to No, unfortunately, we don't have time to do like a two week long video. <laughs> I don't think it will actually take me that long to build the drawers, but I don't I don't have it all drawn out. You want to go grab my little drawing and kind of show them how I laid this out before I started making my cuts? Yeah. And the dimensions did change a little bit. Right. Okay. Let's see. Can they see this? Okay, you guys. I'm showing you the island. So it'll have shiplap on the front and each of those table legs on each side. We're actually gonna flip it up a little bit and make it so that way we can build a uh, cube on the bottom to make them tall enough. And then this is how it will look from the side of you. Zeb originally was gonna do a corbel design because they're not quite tall enough, but instead we're gonna push this leg all the way up to the top and then put a cube below it and then that'll make it tall enough. And then he drew out the top like that, but we're not sure if we're gonna do wood or if we wind up doing a hard surface. And they'll have an overhang and we'll be able to sit about four bar stools. So that gives you guys an idea of the finish. Well, hopefully we'll get to some shiplap today. We're hoping, I'm, I'm trying to hurry so that we can. Zeb did a lot of prep work today. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go back to comments. All right, for just a sec though, because I need you to. Okay, well I. I want to put the glue on, but I need you to hold boards again. Let's see. Let's go. Kathleen Jameson says, "Love it. Your pantry is twice the size of mine. However, it's bigger than I have. Any pantry, especially a walk-in pantry, is better than no pantry. My niece Desiree." has bought two houses and neither one of them has a pantry. And currently I have a small pantry and a big pantry. And whenever she comes over, she's like, and I mentioned, oh, put in the big pantry. She's like, rude, rub it in my face. Then <laughs> I don't have a pantry. So pantries are always awesome, especially when you have a lot of kids. All right, I need you to hold this end up. Okay. And then I think we'll mostly be done with the holding. Mostly. Mostly be done. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna hold it. Well, you push it over there and then yeah, I'll well, so the boards aren't, we're using just common pine two by fours kind of thing. So, 
Uh, this is just a frame. All of this is going to get hidden up underneath. All right. So Wendy says, how is the new addition coming along? Um, if you guys haven't watched us so far with this build, um, we have a huge addition because this original farmhouse is about 900 square feet. With well, a basement. The upstairs floor is 900. Yeah, the upstairs is 900. And then we have a basement. But the basement is not super big and it's mostly like, uh, what's it called? Well, not electrical. Mechanical. Room. Yeah. There's a mechanical room. But anywho, we have. There's two bedrooms in the basement. Yeah, there's two bedrooms in the basement. Um, we're making them into one. But the footings have been poured and we are hoping to get stem walls poured this week. And then after that, Deb's going to be doing framing, framing, and more framing. <laughs> Yes, lots of framing. Mermaid Artist Queen says you want to make a small island? I don't, but I'm not sure. If you want to make a small island, just go smaller. So the way, this is actually where it'll live. We have it drawn out on the floor. And the way we did it is so you have about a foot and a half with the fridge fully open. You've got a straight shot to the backyard right there. The, the drawers will be able to be pulled out all the way, and the stove will be able to be open without banging into each other. So that's kind of like our, our thought process on where we're going to set this. And then over here, I wanted a nice wide area. Let me show you. I don't think I've got it over where you can see it. Well, and Deb doesn't want me to, but I may wind up putting like a skinny bench over here. So we wanted enough space where we could get past the island, but this is the door. This is the doorway that will lead to the addition. So people come, this is like the family rooms over there, so we need to leave this kind of open so people can come through this way. Well, and what there's... What I'm about is that the dishwasher's right here, so if it's pulled open... We might move that over we some. Might, we might move it over as much as possible, we'll see. It might just be, you know, when it's open, people just have to walk around it. Well, that's why we're leaving that wider so you can yeah. get right through there. And, and the, the mud room is right there. The other side of this window. So there will be a mud room over there with the garage. But anyway, that kind of gives you an idea. That. We're building more house than there currently is existing. <laughs> I don't, whose idea was that? Um, I'm pretty sure it was your idea. What, leave the mudroom? No, to buy a house and build more than we started with. Oh, yeah, I don't know. The addition just kind of kept growing. We're like, we're going to need more room. <laughs> <laughs> my goal is to make it so that way, once my kids grow up, if they want to come back and visit with their kids, there's lots of space at Granny's house. Planning ahead. Okay, so these, so I just used a traditional countersink bit on these and drilled these holes through because I'm going to be putting these down on the bottom. That's going to add a lot of strength and support and give me somewhere to put the bottom of the cupboards. So those, I'm not going to worry about gluing those, and I'm just using um, number, either number two, um, or no, number six inch and five eighths screws. Here, I'll show you guys the box. We were talking about islands, about putting wheels on them and making them movable. In our case, these are more like permanent cabinetry. This is the drywall screws he's using. They can't see. Oh. Down. Down? There you go. <laughs> these are the drywall screws he's using. They're just, they're just kind of regular screws. They're, just, they're like our go-to screws. But in our case, we're going to have electrical to the island, and it's a permanent fixture, so it's not going to be moving around. <laughs> He reminds me a lot of myself. 
Um, Angela says, we just bought a house, and I would love to move the stairs to the basement so I can move the dining room to the living room. We actually, so this house originally, if you go back and you watch the video of the um, home inspection, this house originally had two sets of stairs. So the original set of stairs is, is right in front of where the half bath is. And it cut, it cut the floor plan out, and we would have had to like frame it out. And I got this crazy idea to get rid of them completely. So we framed them in and put them in. And the new stairs um, are actually, like if you can imagine over here in this corner, they go directly under the basement. Um, we had to rip them out for stability because there was no proper footing. Um, but we'll be rebuilding them. And they'll go in the family room. They'll be like a railing in the back of the family room. And then they'll go down into the basement from there. So you'll go around the corner and down to get to the basement. And once our, um, once our oldest moves out, that will just be like storage down there because we don't have a ton of storage in the house. So it's not a big deal that they're not super accessible because our living space for the rest of us is going to be upstairs and the stairs will be right out that back door and just go straight up and that'll be all of our bedrooms. So, all right, how are you doing, Zim? Are you winning? Yeah, but I, I drilled some weird holes that I don't think I need. Oh, no, these are the top supports. I like, drilled some, we should make a shirt that says I drilled some weird holes that I don't think I need. I've heard that a few times in my life. I figured it out. They go up here. Can you go see what the camera's seeing? Um, Jana just hopped on. We are building a kitchen island. What do you want to know? I'm just going to move this so they can see what I'm doing over here. Oh, okay. We've got almost 500 people on. Um, so someone said, huge island problem with storage space. This will eliminate... So we're not going to have a lot of cabinetry because we're not doing uppers. So this is going to eliminate almost all of our storage issues. So the um, behind the island, and we may regret it and then put upper cabinets later, we can do that. I'm married to a carpenter. <laughs> but um, I kind of want it nice and open because we have one giant open floor plan, so I just wanted it to be really pretty. So there'll be some, our big um, hook, and then it'll be subway tile from the countertop all the way up to the ceiling. And then we'll do some floating shelves with some pretty stuff that we, you know, use on a regular basis but looks pretty displayed. And then we'll have a ton of stuff in the pantry. I actually am not really a um, gadget person. I don't have a lot of things that I leave out on my kitchen counters. So, I, and I cabinets. We have like two or three cabinets that are just junk. That we don't even really use. Like, we have medicine in our kitchen instead of in the bathroom. We have two cabinets full of like medicine and plastic cups, but we don't even need that. And then like our lazy Susan has a bunch of baking supplies that let's be honest, I don't bake much, so it could go in the walk-in pantry. I'm trying to think what else don't we use? We have two cabinets full of plastic Tupperware that could really be one. So there's, I feel like if we consolidate, we could really, we don't need a lot of cabinets. Yeah. Well, and the Honestly, I feel like you can store so much more in uh, drawers than you can in cabinets if you do them right. And we'll have some big drawers in this that will be able to hold like a 12 inch pot. We have that one cabinet that's between our, um, where our stove is and the fridge. And all we have in there is our blender. Yeah. That's it. All right, so this is really this is really starting to get sturdy. If you if you had a workbench in mind, you could also do something similar to this, and uh, it would hold up really really well and be really strong. So this is just like the skeleton of the island, yeah. Yeah. Janice says, "Always nice to think of an island." <laughs> Where did my husband learn carpentry? Uh, here From and there, and everywhere. <laughs> Being a ready kid. So how, he built kitchen cabinets for his mom for their entire kitchen when he was like 14. Yeah, somewhere around in there. Yeah. I mean, under the direction of my dad. Humidity destroys most pills. Oh, that's good to know, Terry. Maybe we'll keep it in the pantry. It, de it doesn't need to be in the kitchen, I guess, is my point. Like, a lot of the things that we have in our kitchen now don't necessarily need to be in there. They can be in stored in the pantry, and I'm going to keep 
just the main daily essentials that we use on a regular basis in the kitchen, and then the once a month or once every other month stuff can be put up. Yeah. Okay, what's next? So I have four of these, and that's what you were marking for me. Oh, all right. So we've got four of these two by fours that already pre-drilled the holes in them, and then I marked on here every 18 inches because, oh, so those drawers are only going to be that wide? This is the front. Oh, that's the front. So we can ship that in. So we can ship lap it. That's and also, so it holds lots of weight. Oh. Don't do that. <laughs> um, Jeff says the size of the island is perfect. I have one that long, and I love it when I bake or wrap stuff. Well, it'll be it'll be 40 inches, too. It'll, it'll have about a nine and a half inch overhang on the front with the counter. Ours does many a project, and we do host parties every now and then. Lots of uh, kid stuff going on on the island. Oh, Trina can't hear well. So maybe we can speak up a little bit or come a little closer. Sorry. We're at the farmhouse. All right. We're going to show you all the mess. I'll show you <clears throat> the back end here. All right, Jamie, switch around to the other side. All right. I'm just reading comments. I'm going to climb in here. So I have these marked at 18 inches, and we're doing four supports in the front. <coughs> Excuse me. If you need to do four supports, you divide your length by five, and then that'll give you equal distance between four supports. So every 18 inches, this, is, this bottom brace is 90 inches. So every 18 inches, we've got a support here. So Kelly from Girl Up Cycles wants to know what paint finish. We haven't decided. Pardon me things like classic white, but I actually am not opposed to staining it dark and doing a fun color because the whole house is going to be monochromatic. And so it would be nice to have a permanent fixture that's a fun color. The problem is I changed my mind a lot. She was just talking about getting this all nice and finished, and then maybe I'll want to make some changes after living in it for a minute. Well, I said we might make changes in the house after we live in it for a while. You know, the list is never done, is the point. So, Kelly, I'm not decided. If I do a paint finish, it'll probably be something chippy, and it'll be in the green and blue persuasion. Yeah, because um, everything else is white. We have white floors, white yeah. walls, white ceiling. Yeah, I actually think... So in my house now, I have this big tall cabinet, and it's um, milk paint, which is 50-50 Sweetie Jane to pantry door. I don't know if that cabinet's going to find a place to live in here, and so I would like to bring that color back into my main living area, kind of how I have it now. So that is definitely an option to stain it all super dark, use DIYs, dark and decrepit, and then do um, milk paint over the top of that. I don't know. We'll find out. I don't have, the good news is it won't be finished for a long time, so I'll have to decide for a while. Kathleen says she changes up her mind a lot too. That's okay if I don't like it, then I can change it up. Yeah, you know, we'll always have a project for you guys to watch on YouTube. <laughs> oh, Terry wanted to know about the building footers. We went ahead and put them in, even with them being two foot wider than we thought and going up that window of the back wall. Um, and we are thinking, we're not positive that we might just go ahead and put in more, more skylights or natural light. We thought about putting a window um, over to the left, but that doesn't work with my kitchen layout. The stove really needs to go where we originally planned to have it. So our thought is to completely close off that window, add two more skylights into the kitchen for a total of three, and that should add in enough natural light. And then maybe at a later date, even add more skylights. We are loving this one. It's waterproof, the skylight that we put in, and it lets in a lot of natural light. Well, we we also just put in that back door that has a window. And we were, since we have that, we're not super concerned about losing the window over the sink. There's lots of kitchens that don't have windows in them at all because they're in the middle of the house. So Yeah, I think I'm like super glad now that we went ahead and did the back door with a window in it. And our pantry has a window, and the door we're putting on our pantry will have a window in it. So some natural light will come through the pantry into the kitchen. And yes, we know that light is not good for food storage. But I have to have light, so it's just the way it is. I'm getting no food sticks around very long in this house anyways. The kids all eat it. 
Yeah, we, we go through it pretty quick. Uh, Deborah, are you going to use table legs on the corner? Yep, these table legs are going to go here, but they're actually going to go, so the table legs are going to go this way, and we're going to put another block of wood on the bottom. So I have a block of wood on the bottom and the top, and then they'll be tall enough. And we want it to look like a big piece of furniture. And Zeb could have turned custom legs, but we bought uh, eight chairs or something and the table for $140. Sorry, I gotta use the persuader a little. So by the time we sell the chairs, we'll have made our money back, and then Zeb didn't have to turn them. Plus, these have a lot of character in them. They're um, hand turned magnetic pine, and we love these legs. Let's see what we got here. Plus, we still have the top of the table that we'll use some other way. I thought maybe in one of the bathrooms with like a countertop, put like some epoxy on it would be cool. Or we're going to make cutting boards out of them. So if you've been waiting for cutting boards, they might oh, be yeah. coming. So we might be making those big, tall cutting boards. How do we remove excess wax? Make sure that you use mineral spirits. That's one of the best options. Or you can sand it off. And make sure you're taking a lint free rag and wiping it really hard and you'll be able to get that off. If you've heard me talk about paint, I was just talking about um, dark and decrepit and milk paint. We carry all of the DIY supplies that you need to paint stuff at jamierayvintage.com. So make sure you're checking that out. And if you watch our other DIY videos, you can see how we use those products. Where will my trash can go? Deborah again. Deborah, where is my trash can now? This is my sister. Oh. <laughs> I'm harassing her. My, my trash can always goes in the pantry. I do not like it anywhere where you can see it. You know me, I don't even like my toaster on the counter. Alright. Oh, Humble Homesteader says she loves dark and decrepit. Me too. So we use dark and decrepit in um, the bathroom, the half bath, if you haven't watched that, we use that on the um, table that we turn into a bathroom vanity. We use that underneath, and then we paint it over top and wet distress down to the dark room. I like it because it has a built-in sealer, and it's all natural, so it washes off my hands, and I don't have to like do it outside. I don't have to worry about, like, what's the word, asphyxiating myself? Yep. Yeah. slides out best thing ever um we use a really big trash can <laughs> i guess we're like trashy people our uh, trash can would never fail like, we could keep it, one big enough oh Delia takes it out twice a day that's her chore at least twice a day with i mean with five people and food prep and well all we that. work from home it's like the biggest yeah. trash can in the house so we have a big like full-size trash can that wouldn't fit under the kitchen sink and i don't know i feel like our kids they always get stuff all over the place, so I think stuff would like land behind it, and then we'd never know. If you saw underneath my kitchen sink now, you'd be like, yep, there's no room for a trash can. It's a hot mess. We kind of just like throw stuff in there and like shut the door real fast. Currently, it houses like paper towels, trash bags, although I don't know why the trash bags are there because the trash can's in the pantry. We should probably keep the trash bags in the pantry with a trash can. But anyways, and cleaning products are under there. I'm not the most like organized person in the world. Sometimes I do things that make absolutely no sense. I drives my sister Deborah crazy. Does Old and Gray have a built-in sealer? Absolutely. So um, Fraser Barrick is talking about DIYs Old and Gray. It's their barnwood patina, and it has a built-in sealer just like the Dark and Decrepit. If you were doing it on a dining table, I'd probably still do an extra couple coats of sealer over the top. But if you're doing something that's not heavy use, there's no need to seal it because it's got a sealer built in. So that's just doing braces every 18 inches down on the, this is going to be the top, right? Or the this bottom. is the bottom, but oh. it's also going to support the bottom of the cupboard. Oh, okay. Or the, if we do like any kind of cupboard or anything, and it'll keep it from wanting to bow out or move or anything like that. So Zeb is always building things to last a lifetime. He's pretty good about that. I, I think workbench when I think of the kitchen island because that's what, how we use it sometimes. So no prep sink in the kitchen island. Um, reason being that they just get water everywhere. At least in our, I've noticed that like there's always water on the kitchen island when you have a sink there, especially when you have as many kids as we do and hopefully as many grandkids as we're going to have someday. Um, also, because we use it for projects, I just want a big open surface with nothing. 
everything in it. So this is just going to be a big long prep service, and we um, are horrible at passing food at our house. We do. We only eat buffet style, so every meal that we cook, it winds up going out buffet style on the island. How big is the island? This island is eight feet long. Eight feet by forty inches wide. Angela says, how cool would it be if we all took a field trip to the farmhouse? Cool, but I might, uh, it might be a little bit crowded. <laughs> Did you buy anything in France that I will be incorporating into my kitchen? Yes, so I have copper pots and enamel. <laughs> if you watch our um, Christmas tour that we just did, I show you over the top of my kitchen cabinets in our current kitchen. And I have the enamelware and the copper that I bought in France up there just waiting to come into this farmhouse. Deborah says, it doesn't drive her crazy, it just makes her OCD go berserk when I don't do things that make sense. I just, I don't care. Sometimes. <laughs> It's not that I'm lazy or I can't do it. Like, things just really don't bother me. Zeb's actually way more OCD than me, but even things don't really bother him. No, I don't let stuff bother me. Ain't nobody got time for that. I okay. mean, if I have time to, like, line everything up and make it all nice and neat and organized, sure, I'll do it. But usually, it's not happening. Yeah, my copper pots will go on display. I'll probably, um, they'll be, like, on display in the back. So when you walk in the front door, you'll see the beautiful subway tile, copper pots, I haven't designed it all in my mind, but I'm coming around. I'm figuring it out. Sorry, my, my hand is really itchy. It says, um, what about inside the island? Dishwasher, warming drawer? No, nope, this is just going to be storage. So drawers for um, pots, pans, plates, probably a silverware drawer too. The dishwasher. The dishwasher is going over on the back side where the existing window is. And our new oven is actually a double oven. So it has, it has the bottom that has two, and then the top is just one rack. So the top rack can be used as a warming drawer. So we don't need to add a warming drawer. I don't even know what to do with a double oven. I'm like super excited about that. I don't even bake that much, but I'm going to make, I'm going to use it. You can do some stuff. I bet you Eliza would use it. She's kind of getting into baking. Kelly, if you come to Utah, you can totally come for lunch at the farmhouse. Lorraine, I do see your comments. First time live, not sure if I'm seeing this. Been in Weinberg for a while. Yep, I see it. I don't see all of them because I, they go by pretty fast. In a second here, we'll show you where the... Um... Did I buy a brand new oven? We bought a new oven, but it was in the clearance center. <laughs> so the oven that we bought is a gas range, but an electric oven, because apparently it's better to have an electric oven for baking. And, the oven. and because it's got the dual power, it's a little bit expensive, but we bought it in the clearance section, and the guy gave us a really good deal. I think originally it was like 2700 and we bought it for like 1300 I want to say. So... Uh, I don't know. We bought it because we never wanted to get another one again. Yeah. I mean, I don't cook that often, so it should last a long time. It's like that. It's stainless steel, but it's the um, not super shiny kind. So hopefully it works out well. All right. I'm going to bring you guys over here real quick and just show you real fast about the Craig jig, and then we'll go back to putting the top on this. The top? We're not putting the top on I'm going to put the top braces. Oh, the right, top So is. this is the jig I've got. Clamps the wood up in. You can adjust it and do all of that. It comes with directions on how to do it. When you're putting the um, <clears throat> pocket holes in, you don't ever want to go through this end of the board. You always want to be up on this end of the board here. So just slide it in. And it's got little marks here so you know where to put this at for the depth of your wood and the screw you're using. And then just drill down in. Ooh, that's squeaky. Okay, and just like that, I've got my pocket holes. And the way you want to do that is you want to bring that in to, not into end grain, you want to bring that into something like this here so that it catches on this side of the board, not in here. And that's not a, strong in the end grain, is why. That'll make a really strong joint, especially if you're gluing it. So 
that's that's how hard it is to use a crank gear. And you can adjust it for all different kinds of wood and things like that. Kelly says I make a mean dip and stuffed pepper bites. Girl, I'm sold. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, we're gonna put the top back in this, and then somebody was talking about a double oven that they didn't have space. I want to talk about that real quick. They make ovens, so this oven here, this is our oven and our stove right here. It's wrapped in plastic. We're not unwrapping it anytime soon. But this top bar here, this is the single oven, and this has two. Um, trays below and that's the second part of the double oven. So what you miss is the pan box on the bottom, which for me is always just a crumb catcher, but it allows you to have the double oven and we're not actually using extra space because as big as this kitchen is, we don't have a ton, a ton of space, especially since I went ahead and got rid of my upper cabinets for aesthetics. <laughs> so it is an option. If you don't have space for double oven, you can buy these. They're just a little bit more expensive. So buy them on clearance. Okay, so now I'm going to put the top supports in. I'm doing them a little different than the bottom. Well, never mind. I'm not going to do them different than the bottom because I've got this whole area here that. Uh, Can you hold up? Yeah. So hold that right, right there. Let's, let's bring this in. All right, guys, we're going flying. Okay, and down. All right, so I can see. Yeah, so the double oven is in our range. It's not in the wall, which I guess we could have put a double oven over there, but that would have been weird to have it way over there. But yeah, it's all in the range. So the, the oven is electric and the range is gas. So it's a dual power in one unit. It's made by KitchenAid. I'll let you guys know in like six months when I actually use this, how good it is. All right, hold that right there. All right. I thought we were going to get rid of the uh, airplane sounds, but we're right over going so the sink is going see that brown box right there that's our sink and the sink's going right there it might move over, it might move over that way a little bit now that the window the window is going to be gone that window right there so this sink may move that way so we can move see the dishwasher we need to scooch the dishwasher over because the door to the family room is right there so that may all move and then that's our double oven there'll be a big um hood that zeb builds above that we're going to use those legs for the front of the sink. Yeah, so these legs here are the um, legs that are left over from that table. And the sink will go in there, and we'll have the legs on each side, because I like the sink. I like the sink popped out a little bit to look like a piece of furniture. Kelly says she has a double oven, and I will love it. I am super excited. I like it because sometimes I want to make lasagna and frozen cookies at the same time. So I feel like that would be handy. All right, so you know when you you get this pine wood, this is Douglas fir. It's not. It, it it does its own thing as it dries sometimes in a pile. So. Well, and we've had this wood for a good how long? A oh months? yeah, I've had it sitting in here for a while. But it'll do its own thing. But if you can buy the wood and let it sit for a few months and let it dry out, it's better to build with. Yeah, you want to let it acclimate in the the place where you're going to be keeping it. And that'll help you not have so much contraction and Now we didn't plan for it to sit that long. It's just taken us longer than we thought. So bonus, it's acclimated now. Yep. <laughs> All right, let me pull out more questions. Pull out more comments here. We'll pull this old, even though it's not long enough, we'll grab this old uh, tabletop and put it on here so you can kind of get an idea. I wanted to have enough time to do shiplap, but I think we're running out of time. How are we doing? Oh, we're 419. We can put up some shiplap. Um, so somebody asked me how I got, where do we get our design aesthetic? Pinterest? I know. <laughs> uh, um, you know what? It's kind of a ball. Like, I love a very farmhouse style, but I really just decorate the way I like. But when I have something where I'm not sure how it'll look, like, I'll search on Pinterest to find something similar to give me an idea of what I can do. But this house is so unique, the way it's set up, the way the ceiling is and the beams and such, that it's been a little bit tricky. Because we kind of, we didn't design it custom, this part 
of the house. We have to work with the space that we have. Well, it is kind of custom. We took all the walls out. Yeah, I mean, it's that. But, <laughs> you know, there's only so much space we have to work with. Do I carry a paint that's food safe? I do. Royanna, if you buy the Sweet Pickets Milk Paint or Farmhouse Finishes at jamierayvintage.com, they are both food safe. And you can seal them with, um, we don't carry it yet, but we will be. You can seal them with hemp oil or butcher block oil. Um, and you can usually pick butcher block oil up at your local grocery store. They usually carry them in the kitchenware area. We buy ours at Ikea, Home Depot, Amazon carries them. But yeah, Farmhouse Finishes and um, Sweet Pick and Milk Paint are both USDA bio-certified. You don't need me anymore? Well, it got a little tighter as we went, which is why we're putting them in to keep it from doing any foaming and to support the top too. So, uh, Jana says, uh, for, your lovely, for your lovely farmhouse, and she gave us a super chat. Uh, Thanks, super Jana. Chat. Thank you. What are frozen cookies? White decor says. I'm in Australia and have never heard of them. Frozen cookies are the cookies from the grocery store that are already pre-made and they're frozen in little balls and you just put them on the cookie sheet and bake them. <laughs> yeah, the dough's frozen. My favorite brand is Ruby Snap. They carry, it's a local Utah brand. Um, but currently, we have a ton of cookie dough because my daughter did a cheer fundraiser and she didn't sell enough cookies, so guess who got to buy them? Me. So we've been cooking up that cookie dough. Couldn't let the sophomore team down. Frazier Barracks says her oven is also a microwave, the faster cooking method. Um, so this is not a microwave, but it is a convection oven, which I've never had a convection oven before, so that should be interesting. That cooks things faster, I've heard. Why don't you use a sliding barn door into the family room? Because um, over here, while Deb's finishing that up, I'll, I'll give you kind of a brief run down. So over here we have the mudroom and we don't want to cover up this window that leads to the mudroom because I want to be able to see the kids when they come in and there's going to be a door out front that'll have a window in it so it'll let natural light in so the light will come through the mudroom, it'll come through the mudroom door and filter in through this light uh, or through this window that we're leaving here and so I wouldn't want it to slide over and cover that and then the only other way to go is to slide that way and we're going to have cabinets and I just kind of want it nice and open so that way when the kids are in the family room I can hear them and see what's going on. All right, let's see what that's doing up here. I'm just testing out how sturdy it is. Either something's not level or our floor's not. But I'll screw it down to the floor once we get it in. It's it'll be nice. sturdy. I think we've just got some dirt and like sawdust under there. There ain't nothing in level in this house anyways. So <laughs> we'll make sure it's level before we it's level put, enough. yeah, well, before we put the countertop on, we'll shim it and then screw it down. All right, I'm going to give you guys a tour so you can see. Um, so the, the legs are going right here. They will be right here like that. Hold on, Zeb. We're coming back. Okay, come now back. you tell them. There the legs are. Okay, the legs go right here. We're going to build this up. Instead of trying to do something crazy and lengthen it, what we're going to do is I'm just going to make a bottom portion to match this. Oh, I thought we were flipping them the other way. Yeah. And they'll hang right here like this underneath the counter up against the shiplap. Which... And the counter will come out far enough that we can put bar stools along here yeah so the counter comes out nine and a half inches and this is designed to be counter height that it'll ultimately end up about 36 to 36 and a half inches tall depending on what material we put on the top of this truth of the matter if you're doing kitchen cabinets and you don't have a sprayer just use a foam roller a dense foam roller will work and diy paint and then seal them up with big top um, i also sometimes use a four inch wooster foam brush those work to um, alleviate brush strokes. And if you watch the video we just did on that pink chest, we talk about things that you can do to minimize brush strokes using the Water Girl water bottle as well as taking that DIY paint and sanding it smooth with a fine um, sandpaper. That will also help you. You don't have to have these layers. Just takes a little bit longer to do them. You can totally use DIY paint and use a foam brush and a foam roller and get a really great finish. All right, we're gonna get shiplap up. We're gonna we're gonna put some shiplap on. You guys still with us? So if you guys haven't watched it, go over to Debbie's Design Diary and watch her latest video, and you can see what she got me for Christmas. I was supposed to like fast forward so I didn't see it, but I actually watched it, and she got me a bracelet that said I don't give a shiplap, which I love because I love shiplap. So here we go. 
mitering five sections one storage cap for each cabinet for each kid Frazier we wouldn't put the kids in there I'm just kidding I'm sure you mean like storage for their stuff not for them <laughs> all right hold that tight right there okay um, can you guys see what I'm doing so this is from Home Depot is where we buy the shiplap and it is pine shiplap um, it's not custom they do make some that doesn't have knots in it it's a little bit more expensive but this is the same shiplap that we put in our um, bathroom and it'll be the ship lock that we use on the walls. So it'll be a nice carryover that the island has the same finish that all the walls are gonna have because this whole entire space is gonna have wood ship lock in it. And especially when you're doing in this case where we're gonna be painting the floors white, we're gonna have white ceilings and white walls and cabinetry. It's nice to have architectural features like ship lock and stuff because it gives some texture to the light and makes it really just like pop and stand out. Okay, I'm gonna cut this we'll get loud for a second. Okay, so that's so good. I'm gonna try to be fast. We'll show you what you're doing. So over here is our makeshift uh, work table. I'm gonna put on my earmuffs. Seb's got his earmuffs on. If you are using earbuds, you might want to pull them out for just a second because he's going to be using that miter saw to cut those boards. Now, you're going to cut them all at once. Are you sure that you built that square? I'm going to make sure that that end over there is square. We are not using the corbels that we bought a while back on this island because they didn't go with the design. But I am I will find somewhere to put them, so don't you worry about that. They're coming. They're just, they're just really, really big. Yeah. If you, if shiplap was for a wall, would you drywall first? Um, you do need to drywall for fire safety. We don't have to drywall in the farmhouse because we have block. So this is a facade. But in the addition that we're building right out that window over there, um, all of that will have drywall and then shiplap for fire safety and for code. Are convection and air fryer the same? I don't believe so, Renee, but I also don't cook a lot. <laughs> so Carolyn Perkins says her granddaughter got her one of our shirts for Christmas. Right. Yeah, I'm actually wearing my I Love Junk shirt, although you can't see it. It's under my sweater. All right, now we've got these all cut. We're going to show you how quickly you can shiplap something. So this is a Milwaukee M18. It's an 18 gauge nailer. And I've got inch and a half nails in here. That's a mic. I don't know where to put it. Oh, oops. We're losing the light. We gotta hurry up. It's getting dark. This is just 
going to show us where the gap is going here on the bottom. Slide that over. Okay, running your hand up. Um, it needs to come over like this way to the left a little, right? Keep going. Here, do you look at your fingers? Keep going. No, that's, that's not that's you flush it up? Yep. All right, here we go. Where did so, I go with my new pen? It's right there, right there. Okay. All right, go ahead and let go of all that right there. All right, all right. what I'm going to do is change these spots. I'm going to come put this down on that way, and then you can do it. Here I go, because I've got a pump. No, but i got to put this. Here, do it in the middle, because with this natural pine ship lab, it tends to wander a little bit. If you're OCD, you might want to use the MDF ship lap because of manufacturing. This is definitely, this ship lap can sometimes be a little bit warped. Sometimes the lines aren't exactly straight. I'm a little concerned that my sister Deborah might not be able to come to the house because we have so much real wood between the ceiling and the ship lap. There are lots of crooked lines. I'm just kidding. All right, you can pull that out. Well, I cut six of them, so that's how many we're gonna do. <laughs> All right, you want to get into the gap? Here, it's kind of work. Well, we'll start down here on this end. I didn't feel bad at watching Debbie's video before I got my present because Christmas was yesterday, so I waited till after Christmas to peek at her video. Does that count? And it was just as exciting. I also loved watching everything that she bought for everybody else. Is that flush? Um, I can't tell. Yeah, it's flushish. Okay, you can but see how we can... Yeah, it won't be. Don't push it down. Okay. <laughs> I just need to know if it's... This is warped, which is why I'm having this issue. We will, we will get it where we want it as we go here. And it's only half inch, so it's got, a, it's got some flex in it. So traditional shiplap is actual wood, and it's what they used to use instead of drywall. Here, come hold that for me. Actually, let's go right there. Push that, push the board down onto it. Yeah. Okay. We might have a little bit of a dip okay. here, but it's a little authentic. It's authentic. That's for sure. All right. Okay, you in? Definitely helps if you have two people. By the time we get this ship lap, it's going to be so sturdy. Let's just see if there's any questions I need to. Jennifer Jen says she got herself an I Love Junk shirt for Christmas. Business expense because it's part of her painter's wardrobe. Nice. If you guys haven't checked it out, you can look at our merchandise at JanuaryVintage.com. We have a ton of funny shirts. Um, everything we design is kind of like we want to, we want to wear. Where? Over here? Just, yeah, just where's his line up? Make sure your ass is lined up. Um, well, it's coming, it's jogging over a little. Yeah. Well. What? Just put your gather in. Okay. Hands down, the I Love Junk stuff is the most popular. Anything that says I Love Junk is probably the most popular. Here, come trade me spots. Come okay. over here and hold this right here like this. Where? Just let that go. I'm going to come over and nail that. Oh, okay. You could nail it, but you opted for no safety glasses. Well, when I wear safety glasses, um, it messes with my eyelashes, so I only wear them when I have to. But I can do it. You can do it. I can do safety glasses. This one's a little warped too. Yeah, they can sit in here a long time. And if you don't keep them strapped tight, like in a bundle, they'll, they'll move around oh. on you. But they've been here since we did the bathroom. This is left over from that. Right, we, we bought everything they have. Yeah, they've got more intents. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, we luckily we've got about well, six Home Depots here close to us. Cooperating, though. Hold on. Now I water. 
Right, I'm going to push that up. I take both hands. Like, scooch up and sit. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know where my phone's hanging off like that. Oh, 
I guess that's easier. <laughs> I was doing it the hard way. Yeah. I haven't sat on a lot of ledges during builds before, so I didn't know how to sit. Well, you could do a dance on this thing. It's super scary. I'm probably not going to do a dance. Making me struggle. My question is, can I get down now? Yeah, you have it. Alright. I'm glad I can keep this distance. Alright. I'm gonna throw this over here. I think we've been on for like an hour and a half. Um, just like an hour and ten minutes. Alright, so we're gonna show you guys. Here, let's grab that tabletop and we'll put it up on here so they kind of get an idea. Wow, it's getting really dark. Well, alright. But I'm not too strong. That's really heavy. This tabletop is not going to be the topper, but Deb wants to give you an idea of what it will look like. Here, can you move that square? Can you move that square? Yeah. I'll lose it forever over here and you'll be able to find it. Okay. So this pokes it up really high. Here, let's. We scooch it down. There you go. We're going to give you an idea of what it might look like if we have a wood countertop. Picture this leg a little bit higher. Well, actually, it'll come this way. So this will fit up in here like this. And then there'll be a block of wood down here to fill the void. And that'll be what this island looks like. We make, I actually kind of like the natural wood. So that might be a contender. You guys see that? It's coming along. The shiplap changed it a lot. I know. It adds a lot of texture to it. I love it. All right, guys. Make sure you guys are giving this a thumbs up. Hit up jamierayvintage.com for all your paint and products. And be sure to scoop, pull up. And be sure to subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Bye, guys. Love Watch you. Watch for a later future video with, like, the full finished build on this. All the things. <laughs> It'll be coming along Bye, shortly. Guys.